Hi, my name is John Blair and I'm going to show you how to set up a number of taxonomies for your website and to search the content of that website based on those taxonomies. The agenda for this video is uh, we'll take a look at an overview of the website in terms of uh, defining a number of taxonomies. We'll then look at the management of those taxonomies, i.e. where taxonomy tag values are actually used in content. And then we'll look at the content searching against those uh, taxonomies. Uh, after that, we'll look in detail at the uh, taxonomy data type, including its property value converter. Then we'll take a look at the taxonomy manager, which is a content app. And finally, we'll take a look at the taxonomy search bar, which we'll place on the master page of your app that will support incremental search and searching across multiple taxonomies that you define. Okay. Let's take a look at a sample application. This is a fictitious fund management application. Uh, with fund management applications, you typically create taxonomies to handle things like compliance. So compliance would normally be based around countries and investor types. Uh, so we define these as two taxonomies. We define three other taxonomies, currencies, investment strategies, and fund managers, uh, as these are uh, taxonomies that people like to search on. Uh, now, if we take a look at uh, to one of the tags in one of those uh, taxonomies, GBP, what we have is uh, we have a content app taxonomy manager which uh, will take a given tag value gbp and identify all the content pages that uh, that use that tag so in this case there's five pages identified this content app also allows you to look at the the page from a content perspective or to edit it. So we take a look at the content page. Uh, this is just sample one. So if we search, this is a search bar that uh, searches on taxonomies. So this will search the five taxonomies for uh, the value entered and it's incremental. Uh, so we could look at one of the other countries and we'll find that GBP in China is the only combination for that single page. If we, uh, if we wanted to change the taxonomy on that page, we could edit it. We'll find that for this content page, we have the taxonomies defined fund managers, investor types, country, investment strategy and currency and we can add or remove items at will uh, to configure the taxonomies that we want. Uh, equally if, uh, if we find that there's a taxonomy that is not in the category say a new fund manager joined uh, let's just say myself it's not there but we can add that as a new uh, fund manager and then you find and then add it to our content page so if we look at the taxonomies for fund managers now We'll see that there's uh, as myself added as a new one. 
So that's uh, that's an overview of the taxonomies. Now, if we look at how this is structured, uh, we'll take a look at the settings. And what we find is that these taxonomies are set up as a list of uh, data types. We find that uh, we've set up five taxonomies, all based on the same property editor, uh, which we'll take a look at. This property editor uh, takes two uh, two pre values. Uh, one is the root folder for the, the taxonomy, in this case countries, and the type of tag item that we create within this taxonomy, in which case it's our country. Uh, so if we, if we look at the next one comes to, we'll see that's based on the same property editor. We just uh, pick a different a different uh, root folder for that, so we can see taxonomy. And there we go, we've got uh, currencies for that. And the type of tag item is based on the content type. So we'll let the, the user choose the tag type and its currency. So uh, each of these five data types are defined and then uh, we use those uh, five data types uh, in a document type we have our composition one which is abstract taxonomy where we define the five taxonomies and then we associate this composition with the content pages that we want to track by taxonomy. In our case, uh, we see that uh, we've got a content page. And if we look at what's in there, we'll see that uh, one of the tabs is a taxonomy type with the five taxonomies as well as uh, the various other uh, abstractions and if we look at a particular page then we'll see that uh, we just configure the tags as, as required by just adding or removing uh, any items and that uh, that's generally how the the site works okay let's take a look at the taxonomy data type uh, we can see that uh, we've created a property editor called taxonomy uh, with a given alias and let's get two pre values one for the root content folder where the taxonomy is managed and ta tag type where the taxonomy items are created using this uh, document type. Uh, so we we'll take a look at the code to see how that's done. What we can see is uh, we have a, a, pl a plugin taxonomy one which is a property editor and we give it the name taxonomy it's got a view and the view will reference a controller and then it's got two pre values one for the tag root folder which is a tree picker and the other one tag type which is a content type picker it's got uh, javascript for its controller and it's got its own css file we define some less files and then uh, 
we generate um, an applied CSS for them using Gulp. So we take a look uh, at the HTML. Uh, basically, what this HTML represents is is one of these properties. So available list of tags, the applied list of tags, and then a config section. Uh, where you can add uh, a new item if you want. In the available list, you can add new items. They get added in sorted order and they get removed in sorted order as well. So you can see that Jacob Reese will get moved to the middle. Uh, Alan will move to the, the start. So we just move uh, the tags that we want associated with a content page and then we save and publish it to set up the taxonomies for the page. So that's the, that's the HTML takes care of rendering that and we have our own custom CSS to give it this look. Uh, so then in the controller uh, Basically, we've got some JavaScript that uh, manages that. Uh, what we actually do is, in the model value, we store uh, both the tag names and the tag ID. The reason we do that is because as it's content, uh, people can rename these tags. And then uh, if those tags are displayed on a page, will automatically adjust to the, the new name. Uh, although bear in mind, you'll need to save the page to get the search index updated with uh, any renamed values. So uh, just picking out some interesting items within the uh, controller. So we have a taxonomy resource which uh, communicates with the server side uh, to get the tags. So what we find is we've got a start node configured for the, the property editor and we've got a tag type alias that, uh, that the tags are based on. So the server side will start at that start node and search for all descendants of that tag type and that forms all the tags that are that could possibly be used. Uh, we get the applied tags for this property at the moment uh, is saved. We have a little special that uh, if a tag gets deleted from the content area, the server side won't be able to find it and I'll identify it with a stash. So we can uh, uh, we can add all the applied tags that are not dashed, and then if it's dashed, we actually delete it uh, from the model value uh, to bin it from the page. Uh, we've got uh, HTML scope functions that uh, to apply a tag. Uh, once we apply a tag. Uh, where we get all the applied tags and basically manage the list of uh, available tags and applied tags. Uh, we do the same when we remove a tag. And when we create a tag, we'll uh, make use of the resource to actually create a new tag and then update uh, all the tags available. And this is just the resource that communicates with the back of office. So we've got a controller defined and we've got a couple of uh, methods, get tag, create tag, get apply tags. Uh, use get for the get tags. We use post for the create, try to be kind of restful. Uh, and I find that uh, even with post, 
it's more convenient just uh, passing the parameters as params so on the query string uh, rather than embedding it in the, the method. Uh, same get apply tags, I decided to make it a post rather than a get because the applied IDs in theory uh, could be very large and so it could exceed the standard 2k query string uh, allowance whereas post is unlimited so that'll uh, avoid any trouble down the line uh, so matching this uh, taxonomy service we've got a taxonomy uh, API controller uh, we actually make it a plugin controller so hence the taxonomy and the URL to target it and we make it uh, an authorised controller so that no random visitor to your sites could uh, start creating tags uh, undesirable as it would be so uh, matching the matching the client side so we have a uh, this is just a get uh, we get the the root node and then we get all the descendants of the given tag type and we order it by name just to present it in an ordered manner on the page uh, create an attack we access the content service uh, we get the tag root we create and save and then publish the item and uh, when we return to the server, the server will get all the tags and then it will be available on the available list. And getting applied tags is takes all the IDs that are stored for the page and gets the current name of each tag value and returns that to the client and flags any that are no longer available on the server side. So that's that. Uh, the one additional thing that we've defined for this uh, taxonomy data type is our property value converter. Uh, what, what we want is uh, when we pick up these taxonomies we want to see them as a list of published content so all the tag all the tag items as content and then we can process them as we wish so we, we have, we've defined our property value converter uh, that ends up returning that list and basically we, this will do the conversion for all our taxonomy data types uh, it will take the initial list which uh, we store we store the property value as an array of an array of uh, uh, and the inner arrays get two items uh, so when we convert it to an intermediate we will take the, the inner array of two items and make it a key value pair then uh, the list of key value pairs will convert to a list of uh, I publish content and we do that by uh, taking the current publish snapshot and we get the content by ID and we, we can see there it's a published content and we just add it to the, the list so uh, that is that if
Okay, let's take a look at the Taxonomy Manager. Uh, this is actually a content app that uh, helps you manage the taxonomy. It does that by taking a look at each value or the value you're, you're on and it will tell you all the content pages that uh, that tag is configured on. So it gives you the URL of the page that you can open up in a, in a new tab or it will allow you to edit that page if you want to change the, the tags on it. Uh, so let, let's, uh, let's see how that uh, content app has been implemented. So in the project, we have a, another plugin for our taxonomy manager, uh, which got its own uh, manifest, an HTML view, and a controller that goes with it, and some uh, CSS. So the package manifest, uh, we define it as a content app give it a name, uh, identify where we want it on the, on the tab. Uh, so taxonomy will come just before the info. And we give it an icon. Uh, thought it was a useful search, search looking icon. And then it's view to present it. And then we've got a controller and some CRM. CSS. So the actual view uh, is basically a panel with a table uh, and it just displays the content pages that uh, that, uh, that tag is, is used in. And if we have a look at the controller, uh, what we what we've done for this controller is we know we've got five taxonomies, so if uh, the user's not on a node that is one of those tag types, then we don't do anything save constantly hitting the, the server. Uh, so if, uh, if we're on a valid taxonomy type, then we'll call our server resource to get the content pages uh, for that uh, for that comp node and the actual alias with taxonomy added on the end now this is uh, this is the name of the property that's added to the content page if you notice when we defined our document type, we define all the properties with a taxonomy suffix in addition to the, the type of the taxonomy. So that uh, this is the search index field that we want to, to look in to see if the taxonomy value is actually being used. So that that's why that's passed. Uh, so that's the search property to look at. And the current node is passed in so that the server can extract the name and then look up the name in uh, the search index field and return the content pages that are basically just uh, presented as a table on screen. And we can see that uh, we just get the content pages and pass those uh, uh, two parameters in. On the server side, uh, 
we actually use a Numbrical API controller this time rather than an authorised one. This is because we, this shares the standard content search bar engine, uh, so it needs to be available uh, to users that aren't logged into the system. So we've got our get content pages. Uh, slight digression. Uh, end up putting the, the namespace uh, before the HTTP GET uh, because in this project it defaulted to the MBC HTTP GET and that was causing uh, uh, 404 issues when trying to call the method. So uh, uh, I had to make sure that it was the HTTP version of the HTTP GET. Uh, and that's fine. So we'll get the content pages. And let's say we've got the tag ID and the search index field that we want to examine. So uh, do a bit of validation on the parameters. Uh, we we'll get the tag content page, pull out its name. That's what we want to search. Uh, so that the way we do the search is we find the external index, get the searcher that's on that, then we create a query. Query says, look at all content pages, as at the moment we've only defined the taxonomies on content pages. And uh, if the search term is made up of multiple words, we uh, we break them up into individual ones and check that uh, that the particular search field, taxonomy field that we've been given contains that, that term. Uh, and then we execute the query. Uh, we we'll get the set of results. Uh, we pull out the ID field from the results to get the content page. Uh, we then access the page and we form a result for that. So we use the page name, the page URL, and the page ID. The URL is <laughs> in the table uh, that will allow us to view the content page and the ID is there to allow us to edit the, the page. So we form these results and return that to the server and that's uh, that's your taxonomy manager content app covered. Okay, let's take a look at how the search bar works with these uh, taxonomies. The way the site is set up, uh, we have uh, global settings that apply to every page. Uh, one of those is we define a header section and indeed a footer section that apply to all pages. As part of the header section, uh, we have a property that says include the search bar or not. Incidentally, each individual page can have its own local settings and define its own header and own footer. So you can turn search bar on or off uh, any page that you want. So how this search bar is picked up uh, by the master page. We'll take a look at it in a minute. Uh, but the effect of that flag being turned on is on a page we'll have this search bar displayed. So in this content page uh, we can see this is a ta sample taxonomy page. It just lists the uh, taxonomies that are defined for that page. Uh, in the content tree and 
So if we search for any term here, what uh, what happen is each word in the search phrase will be looked up in each of the five taxonomy search fields and if there's a match in any any field then that content page is returned uh, so it's additive so you could uh, search for a country and a fund manager and an investor type uh, and so it's only that combination of tags that are applied to uh, a page will be returned. So we can see, for instance, if I search for China, then uh, taxonomy comes back. But if I, if I did France, you'll see it's not in there because that's not one of the countries. Uh, but then if I add a fund manager, Jacob, it comes back. So that's fund manager, investor type, uh, what have we got? So it's institutional. So it's, see it disappears, institutional, but it comes back now. So that's three taxonomies that we're matching. And investment strategy, so uh, we've got uh, fixed income. I'll do it on fixed because it's a partial word. We'll search, but as soon as we start typing income, it won't come back until the full phrase is there. So both fixed and income terms appear. So that's four categories, and then currency, it's in. Uh, okay, so it's in, all right, I think there's Australian dollars defined. So if I do AUD, it's not in there. But if I do GBP, it comes back. So that's, that's five taxonomies that this one page targets. And that pulls out your results. So you can see that uh, it's quite, uh, quite powerful and the, the way that you can do a search and once you find something you can hit return and it'll take you to the page so if we do others like uh, gbp uh, you can hit return it'll take you to the first page but uh, you can just pick on any and if we do gbp again we could Pick tabs. Uh, looking for that, so do Jacob again. We can uh, we can see that uh, there's a there's a number of pages with uh, these categories defined. Uh, so now let's take a look at how that's done in code. What we find is that we've got a search section that renders that search bar at the top of the page. Uh, it's got some CSS and uh, I use a jQuery plugin called TypeAhead that does the uh, type ahead, <laughs> uh, hits the server with what you're typing. The server looks up the index uh, against the five taxonomies for what you're searching for and returns a list of pages that match your search criteria. The search bar is pulled into the master page through the header section. The header section checks the flag, see if the search bar is required and it will bung in that search section. Uh, the JavaScript for the search bar uh, use the type of plugin with the Bloodhound tokenizer. It will hit our 
search, taxonomy search controller that uh, we saw in the previous video slide. Uh, in this case, it, it's the general search method and uh, I've just configured this for 10, 10 pages to come back. Uh, I find one of the things with searches is that very few people go to, go to the next page. So a paged result set is very, very rarely of any, any real use. So I find uh, I would rather refine my my search term to to narrow uh, what I want. So that's our server side that does the search and returns the list, and they're presented on screen in that drop down list of items. So we take a look at the controller. This is our search method. Again, get. 10 items with our query. Now the query in this case will apply across all the taxonomies. So that's the five taxonomies. What we do with the query string after validation is we split it up into words and they each form a search term. So we have a whole list of items potentially. And what we do is for each word in the search phrase we check if that is in any of the five taxonomies. So the, the way we do that is we pull out the external index and we match only against content pages. Then for each term, we do a grouped or. So it's in the content page and it's in at least one of the taxon taxonomy fields. And we do that for each term. So it's an and, and it's in one of the taxonomy fields, and the next term is in one of the taxonomy fields, and the next term is in one of the taxonomy fields, and so on. So that that's why we were able to combine a search for a for five terms, each of which were in uh, different taxonomies. Now you can also have multiple terms in single uh, taxonomy. So like that five taxonomy example, if I added multiple currencies and all the currencies were defined on the taxonomy for that page, it would still re return the result. Uh, so we form our search query basically based on group tours. And uh, much like before in the previous video, we get our results, we pull out the we pull out the content. Uh, we actually the content results are only slightly different to what we've seen before. Uh, content pages have an OG logo. Uh, so we'll pull that image out and if we don't find one, we'll use the, the site logo. Uh, I shouldn't hard code this, but uh, uh, I'll do it for now. Uh, so we pull out the URL and the results that we return are the page name. Pull out a description if there does a meta description for the page and we return the page URL and the image URL so that that gives us so that gives us the page image and the page name and it's a URL so we can actually uh, we can actually click on the page So that forms a result set and then we uh, return it and that's essentially how the search bar integrates with the uh, taxonomies set up uh, in the, the back office. Uh, thanks for watching.